work. So here we are, and uh, this is the room where I have been working uh, in Florida on some of the projects that I've got going on right now. Not doing like a regular day of writing uh, like I like I have been um, in the past, but I try to get a few hours in every day. I'm working on a musical with Brandy Clark, and um, we're hoping to be uh, on Broadway not too long from now, so we have a lot of work to do. But I'm um, very excited that American Songwriter asked if I could uh, be a part of, you know, this sort of way of communicating for songwriters and artists now as we are, um, you know, making the best of the situation. And I feel a little trivial and a little silly at times uh, doing something like this because of all the people that are, to me, actual heroes out there doing things that are unimaginable, you know, sacrificing their health and their time and time away from their families to go and protect all of us. And so I just have to just acknowledge that and say how grateful I am. And for all of you who are just joining, I again apologize for the technological word I cannot say difficulties that we had. So I'm going to talk about uh, some songs that I've written. You know, we do this in Nashville a lot. Uh, we do rounds at the Bluebird, and a lot of times I have my friends like Josh Osborne or Brandy Clark or Matthew Ramsey and Trevor Rosen, Sam Hunt, people that we do rounds with and talk about the stories and the songs and the reason they were written. And, and it's, a, it's really one of my favorite things to do. It's something I really miss about um, not being able to leave the house right now or even the region that we're in. So what we'll do is we'll throw around, you know, like I'll go first and, and of course I'll go first. Right. Um, <laughs> and um, I'll be able to, tell a story about why a song was written, how it got started, and then play a little bit of the song. So luckily, the folks over at American Songwriter uh, sent me some sort of questions to jump off of. And, and by the way, you guys can throw up questions too. It's kind of hard to follow all the comments, but I'm going to try. And I see someone, JD, mentioning the songs from Shelter. And uh, that was such a cool a uh, project to be a part of that's been a while now but that was one of the first things as a songwriter that happened for me was I wrote some songs for an independent film called Shelter and um anyway so I appreciate someone acknowledging that and I'm also s always so pleasantly surprised that people still know that movie and know those songs um <laughs> Suzanne Laird is telling me to tell the story of when I was a mascot um it's a long story uh, I don't know if it works for the songwriting world, but it may come up during this. Um, so I grew up in Mineral Wells, Texas. I know most of you on here know that because you uh, are probably on here because you know me. But um, I write a lot with people from small towns. And even though they might not be from Texas, they do know the world um, that I grew up in because they grew up in the same kind of town. And one of the songs that uh, I was specifically asked to talk about is American Kids, a song that was recorded by Kenny Chesney. And the question was, I have I written a lot of songs with my co-writers on that song, which is Luke Laird and Rodney Clawson, two of the biggest songwriters in Nashville. And if you don't know their names, you would probably be shocked to know how many of their songs that you know. Um, we got together like we do a lot of times in Nashville and we have these uh, sessions where we sit down and, and just throw around ideas. And that particular day we couldn't land on anything. And I like to have a title when I go in, I like to talk about, um, you know, what has inspired me that day or something I've written in my phone. So with Luke and Rodney especially, I would like to go in with something and be prepared and give them something to jump off of. Even if we didn't write it, it might be just so I look prepared. And um, I kept calling out different things from my phone. I remember saying like T-Top or is that a song? Um, or Baptist Church or um, School Bus. Like are these ideas that could just be a song? And what happened was in, in me throwing out all these ideas after a couple of hours of just sitting there with nothing. I think Rodney said, 
all those things that you have been saying sound more like a song together, like a list of just American life flashes of what goes on in small town America. And so we just kind of went down the list and started adding things and trying to make it into a story. And um, it, it, you know, started to, to actually make sense with just snapshots. School bus kicking up red dust, picking us up by barbed wire fence. MCV on the RCA, no AC in the vents. We were Jesus save me, blue jean baby, born in the USA. We were trailer park truck stop, fade a little map dots, New York to LA. We were teenage dreaming, front seat leaning, baby, come get me. So that was sort of, you know, what inspired that song was just a list of small town ideas and things that Rodney and Luke and I had all grown up on. And uh, we just put them all together like a quilt and took all these song titles and, and then ultimately made them into uh, a song that's sort of stream of conscious. I love writing lists like that. Um, probably too much. I sometimes get uh, teased about the fact that I just love a list. Even if sometimes they don't seem like they go together, I love it feeling like you're looking at a series of Polaroids and, and snapshots. So, um, oh my God, there's so many people I love on here that I'm getting to see y'all's names go by and I love it. Um, I appreciate y'all jumping on, um, especially since we, we had quite a rocky start to this. It's very weird to be doing this and, and, not have a reaction like I see y'all's comments but I've I've never done one of these where there weren't other people with me or that I wasn't having a conversation back and forth it's it's very strange because you really do rely on the reaction of an audience to know if the crowd is is with you and uh so I, I feel like you are with me but I can't I can't hear you or see your faces so it's it's very uh strange to me I saw someone earlier talking about um, Mama's Broken Heart and a few questions about that song. It's one that I like to tell the story of because again, I, I go back to my roots in Texas and growing up there and my sister, who a lot of you know, grew up doing pageants and um, my mom gets a lot of heat for, we love to tease my mom. She's the catalyst for so many of these stories. She's a character. And those of you who know her know it, and those of you who don't may know it too, because I write so many songs about her. And um, I know she's on here too, so I love you, Mom. And I do appreciate all of the uh, <laughs> all of the inspiration. Mom says that the Grammys I have should be sitting on her mantle, and that's probably true. But I'm gonna keep them on my mantle, and she can come visit them because I love them. But uh, anyway, Mom's Broken Heart was a song that years ago was inspired by the fact that my sister was going through a breakup long before she met her husband. And uh, she was being crazy like all girls, but especially Texas girls when they go through a breakup. I don't know why I just say girls. I mean, I've gone through some pretty crazy breakups and done some pretty crazy shit myself. But um, anyway, she was just, you know, kind of climbing the walls. And my mom just didn't want to hear it anymore. She said she's just got to pull it together. And um, so uh, I went in to write at, right after getting off the phone with um, my sister. And I was just telling the story to Brandy Clark and Casey Musgraves. I was like, oh my God, I've been on the phone all morning with my sister, then my mom, then my sister, then my mom. And basically my mom had just said, you got to, you know, put on some makeup and pull it together. Not those words exactly, but those words metaphorically. And my sister just felt like, you don't know what I'm going through, you know, so it's not that easy. 
And we took some pretty specific details in this song. And uh, funny enough, it, it ended up being a very universal story. And, and what happened was uh, we thought we were writing it for Casey Musgrave's first record, Same Trailer, Different Park, a record that I worked on for a long time. And we were kind of looking for a song to launch the record. And we thought this was it. And then Casey was at, uh, at Miranda and Blake's wedding. Um, I don't know if that's something I should or shouldn't be talking about, but that's actually what happened. And Miranda had heard Mama's Broken Heart and loved it. Someone had played it for her and she went to Casey there in her wedding dress and said, I need this song for my new record. That's a really hard thing for an artist, especially someone like Casey, who at that point had never had any success. She hadn't put a record out. And so here you are presented with this opportunity to have the biggest female star in country music um, offering to cut your song. But at the same time, you're like, but this is my song. So um, she did end up letting Miranda cut it, and it ended up being a huge hit for Miranda. And... Um, and Casey also got to do a brilliant version of it too, but this is the song that started out about my mom and my sister. Well, I cut my bangs with some rusty kitchen scissors. I screamed his name till the neighbors called the cops. I numb the pain at the expense of my liver. Don't know what I did next. All I know is I couldn't stop. Word got around to the barflies and the baptists. My mama's phone started ringing off the hook. Yeah, I can hear her now saying she ain't gonna have it. It don't matter how you feel, it only matters how you look. Go and fix your makeup, girl. It's just a break of running. Hide your crazy and start acting like a lady, cause I raise you better gotta keep it together even when you fall apart but this ain't my mama's broken heart so the funny story about that song is that my mom always gets embarrassed when i tell the story that it's about her uh because you know it is a, it's a little bit crazy but it's a whole lot true and um she always told me to stop telling everybody that it was about her. She didn't want to claim it. And then she met Miranda Lambert backstage at a concert. And Miranda uh, said how much she loved the song. And she, you know, mom said, oh, I'm Shane McAnally's mom. And Miranda said, oh, I love Mama's Broken Heart. And then my mom changed her tune pretty fast. And she said, well, you know that song's about me, right? So that's one of our famous stories about Margaret, my mother, because, uh, you know, it's pretty hard not to be proud when Miranda Lambert is bragging on your crazy stories. Um, so I'm looking at everybody's names going by and someone just said parenting advice question <laughs> mark. Oh gosh, I have to say this quarantining uh, makes me question myself as a parent. Um, it's been an amazing time to spend with our kids and to have this, you know, sort of forced proximity. We are so glad that we have quality time and I'm not going to try to sugarcoat this. Um, but it's also been really, really trying. And um, when you are constantly with your kids, you're very tested. And we have two very precocious, uh, energetic seven-year-olds that make me laugh and sometimes make me cry, honestly, because you feel like you're not doing a good job. But we are trying our best. And um, we very luckily ended up in the panhandle of Florida for the quarantine. We were here for spring break a few weeks ago and that's when everything sort of got serious and luckily enough we have a place here that we could stay in so we're in beautiful weather and we have it better than most but um but no matter how beautiful the weather is <laughs> or all of the amenities that we may have we're still with our kids all day every day and it's you know it's not easy so um somebody just said how often do you see Casey Musgraves um I see Casey I don't see her in person right now because no, we don't see anybody in person, but I talk to her a couple of times a week. Um, we, uh, we haven't talked that much about music. Um, I think she's, you know, definitely still in that part of after putting out a record like golden hour and having two years of touring and two years of 
all this attention that uh, she needs a sort of decompression, figure out what she's going to do next. But um, I know that you'll be excited to hear whatever she does next because it's always wonderful. Um, another song that people ask about a lot, which has gone on to be the biggest song for me so far, is uh, Body Like a Back Road. And what's funny about Body Like a Back Road is that it sounds like a song that we wrote in 30 minutes. And, um, oh, Sandra Meyer, yes, I, I know. <laughs> Having the kids and great kids. <laughs> Very trying. But um, what about Body Like a Back Road, the, the idea that it, it sounds so conversational and so quick, like it was written really fast and easily, that was definitely the intention of Sam Hunt. Um, Josh Osborne and I write a lot of songs together and we spend a lot of time trying to surprise people with our lyrics or to trick out, uh, you know, a pun or make you laugh or hopefully make you feel something through uh, intelligent twists and rhyme schemes. And that's why we have had the success that we've had and why we get to continue working with all these artists. But sometimes we probably forget that the simple way is the best way when you're trying to just write to the heart. And with a song like Body Like a Back Road, Sam had that title and it just sounded like it was already a hit. You know, we had to Google quickly when Sam said, what about the title Body Like a Back Road? I was like, that's had to have been a song because it just sounds like it's always been there. And so what happened then was we spent the first writing session just coming up with all these puns about roads and a woman's body and, you know, how many ways you could compare them. I mean, I've heard the joke from comedians about like, uh, I don't know if calling a, a body a back road is such a compliment, but we certainly meant it as one. But then what happened after we had the song all written was Sam went back and said, now I want to take out all the tricks and make it just sound like a conversation. And that's why the verses feel so simple. So it's like, I got a girl from the south side, got braids in her hair. First time I seen her walk by, ooh, I about fell about my chair. Had to get her number, it took me like six weeks. I mean, her go way, way back like Cadillac seats. Body like a back road, driving with my eyes closed. I know there's a curve like the back of my hand. Doing 15 and So those verses were intentionally lax, like just sound like it's just happening. You know, when the line came out, um, it took me like six weeks. That was such a uh, last second addition. Sam was just singing in the studio and he was like, had to get her number. I don't remember what the line was, but he goes, took me like six weeks. Because that was a true statement for him when he met his wife. And so he was just trying to make it fun and real. And um, that is really uh, the magic of writing with an artist like Sam, is that um, he loves to go in and trick it out and, and make it as, as, I don't know, grandiose, make the songs as smart as possible, and then sort of throw it all out and go, now let's make it fun. Let's use those ideas. And um, I, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to listen to his new record, but we have... Uh, a little song on there called Hard to Forget that's his new single. And that it's it, we did the same thing, which is keeping it simple. We had a really cool hook with You're Playing Hard to Forget, and we're able to just make it fun. And uh, I'm really excited that everybody's getting to hear this record that he's been working so, so long on. Um, someone just said, did you ever want to be a performer on the big stage? Yeah, I moved to Nashville to be an artist, and I had a record deal in the 90s. And uh, it just didn't work out for me that way. I had been performing since I was 12 years old in bands and around local Opry's 
in Texas and Oklahoma and spent all my time doing that. I always wrote songs. It was always very natural to me, but I didn't know that you could do that without doing the other. So I went to Nashville to become an artist to get a record deal. I did those things. Uh, was on the road with some of my heroes like Alabama, um, Martina McBride. I was on the road with Kenny Chesney back then. And, um, you know, none of the songs ever took off. Uh, it was just one of those things. Uh, I just wasn't ready or maybe, you know, the timing was off. It, it makes sense to me now that I had to spend some time um, writing on my own. And I moved out to L.A. and played for a while. And then ultimately the songwriting is what uh, sort of catapulted me. And um, some somebody asked about the song Wild Child. That's a that's a really interesting song um, that I don't, you know, a lot of people don't ask about that song. So yeah, I'll talk about Wild Child is a song that uh, Josh Osborne and I wrote with Kenny Chesney. What is cool about that is that we got a call from Kenny to go to uh, St. John where he has a house. And sometimes he... Um, invites people to write there. If you're super lucky, I felt very lucky. In fact, you, you land on one island and then you take a helicopter over to St. John and Kenny has a plane and it's pretty awesome. And we went there uh, to write for the big revival, that record that um, American Kids ended up on that record. And what we wrote while we were there was, Amer uh, was Wild Child. And that was a, a title that, I wanna say Wild Child was Kenny's title. And I remember we wrote it in the morning, looking at the ocean. And um, yeah, so that's that story. Season two of Songland, Stephen Molinero, I Miss You Buddy, is, uh, it's gonna start a week from today, actually. And I cannot wait for y'all to see it. It is just so much fun. And uh, I just saw a rough cut of the first episode with Lady Annabellum. I, I just, I can't say enough about all the artists. We have Usher, we have BB Rexa, we have Florida Georgia Line, um, Boys to Men, and um, it's just the the most gratifying uh, situation I could ever have dreamed of. It, it is what I do anyway, every day in in life with songwriters and and aspiring songwriters. I don't always get to play my songs in front of Usher, but I do work with young songwriters and and hope to just you know tell them the smallest of tweaks that they could do to get their songs heard and recorded and that's what we're doing it's it just really is amazing to watch these dreams come come true for um for these other songwriters it's it's amazing um i just saw someone mention somewhere with you that was a song that i used to play out in um la when i was still living out there and i would go back and forth and uh, gosh, I used to just think if Kenny Chesney would just um, hear this song, maybe everything would change for me. And uh, that happened somehow. I guess, you know, just looking at a dream long enough and, and waiting, I don't know why I did, but here's that. If you're going out with someone new, I'm going out with someone too. I won't feel sorry for me I'm getting drunk, but I'd much rather be Somewhere with you, laughing loud on the car all right Yeah, driving around on a Saturday night You made fun of me Singing my song out of hotel rooms I turned you on, you said pick me up At 3 a.m. you've been fighting with your mom again And I'd go, I'd go, I'd go Somewhere with you That song is really the one that sort of uh, lit fire to my career. It changed everything for me. I'd, I had a cut before that, um, but that song and Kenny Chesney, someone of his level, recording a song and putting it out as a single, it went on to be a four week number one. And um, I remember the first time I heard it on the radio, I was with Brandy Clark. We were in Colorado riding with our friend Mark D. Sanders. And it was, we were going back to the airport and it was five in the morning and it was snowing and that we, I started the car and it was on the radio and Brandy looked at me and she thought it was like my phone or a CD or something. We just couldn't believe we were sitting there in such an interesting time and that this song was on the radio. It still gives me chills 
thinking about it. Um, let's see, talk about working with Casey and or Natalie. Uh, you know, Natalie Hemby is one of the high women. She's written some of your favorite songs like Pontoon and, and um, she's written a ton with Miranda. She wrote Automatic. Um, and I actually wrote Rainbow with Natalie and Casey. And that song we wrote seven years ago and never dreamed as it didn't make same trailer different park it didn't make the pageant material record and never dreamed that it would show back up and end up uh being the closing song on golden hour which is you know obviously casey's most successful record and and uh what a dream a gift that that song waited for its time and with some personal things that happened to us last year and the loss of our sweet uh chi chi um who is our our friend, family member, she took care of our children, and that song took on a whole new life um, in the last few months of her life. And now we all chase rainbows and believe that she's sending them to us constantly. And um, I'll sing a little bit of that one. Actually, I posted a video today on my Instagram of my little girl singing rainbow, and it's dedicated to all of the, uh, the folks on the front lines right now who are just showing up and, and taking care of of people even at the risk of their own health and safety. So the song has been a song that gives back to me because I want to be a part of something that matters on different levels. And this song has done that. When it rains, it pours, but you didn't even notice. It ain't raining anymore. It's hard to breathe when all you know it. The struggle of staying above the rising waterline But the sky is finally open The rain and wind stop blowing But you're stuck out in the same old storm again You hold tight to your umbrella But darling, I'm just trying to tell you that there's always been a rainbow hanging over your head. So there's a little bit of rainbow. Like I said, that one's, it's so, uh, it's so bittersweet to sing that song, to get to be a part of a song like that that has meant so much to me, almost objectively, almost like uh, I didn't write it because it, it feels like God had such a, big hand in that and and in all the songs I mean I always feel like I'm just a, a vessel that uh, God is using to get these songs out there but that's one that I just am so glad that it had its time um thank you Renee for that very very sweet message um somebody said is there anybody that you're praying would cut one of your songs I always say Adele not so much because she's the biggest artists out there but because her voice is just so timeless and um you know for a long time it was George Strait I just wanted George Strait to record one of my songs growing up in Texas and just growing up on King George when I got to Nashville you know I would pitch songs to him all the time but it just never worked out and then a couple of records ago he actually cut a song that Brandy Clark and I wrote called Take Me to Texas and very cool about that song is that I went to see George in Vegas last year completely randomly. I didn't, you know, ask his managers for tickets or anything. We just went with a group of friends and that song was never a big hit, but he just completely coincidentally played it in the show. So that was one of the greatest moments for me was um, getting to see George, not just sing one of my songs, but also sing a song that I wrote about Texas because uh, his influence on my music is huge, and, and a lot of that was because I grew up in Texas just wanting to be George Strait. But as I said on Songland last season, my name wasn't George, and I wasn't straight. So I had to forge my own path. <laughs> uh, I see some people talking about Midland. Uh, Midland is uh, another incredible Texas band. They moved uh, to Texas a few years ago, and I'm so, so glad that I met those guys uh, when I did, Josh Osborne and I wrote, the day we met them, we wrote this song. Um, and again, just so grateful. Those guys keep me laughing and they're just incredible, incredible people. One more night, one more down, 
One more, one more round First one in, last one out Giving this town a lot to talk about But they don't know, they don't know People say I got a drinking problem That ain't no reason to stop People saying that I hit rock bottom Just cause I'm living on the rocks And it's a broken hearted thinking problem To pour another bottle off the wall Yeah, people say I got a drinking problem But I got no problem drinking at all They keep on talking, drawing Call it a problem, I call it a solution Just sitting here in all my grand illusion Call it a problem, I call it a solution So that's a little drinking problem. I know that's Shoemaker's favorite right there. Um, and that has been a really fun project for me to work on two records now with those guys uh, because they are influenced by so many of the same people as me with George Strait and Keith Whitley and Gary Stewart. And uh, so we're just, we're just writing songs that sort of fit into another world. And luckily those guys have brought them to life and made them commercial. Um, someone asked about how Smack songs started. Uh, it wasn't an intentional idea of, oh, I have to have a publishing company or you know turn this into something bigger. But um, I couldn't get a publishing deal 10 years ago. And uh, so, I really had no choice but sort of to hang on to my publishing. And in talking sort of technical, a publisher is someone that sort of foots the bill for a songwriter and then exploits their songs and goes and works as an agent for the songs. And, you know, at the time I was uh, just barely getting by and I couldn't find anyone to do that for me. And um, it turned out to be lucky for me because what happened was I had a few songs that took off and I was able to use the money I made on those songs and hire uh, a song plugger and a couple of other people. And then also ultimately sign some of my friends who needed publishing deals. And it started with Trevor Rosen, who's uh, in Old Dominion and, you know, ultimately turned into a lot of my friends writing for Smack Songs. And we just really were sort of this little engine that could. And now we've grown into just this incredible independent uh, publishing company that my sister, and Robert Carlton helped run, and Robin Palmer, and my husband's involved. We uh, have an incredible staff, and we have 18 staff writers that blow my mind every day. So I'm getting to do sort of the real life songland in Smack, and uh, listen to these writers' songs, and just hear their dreams, and you know, hopefully, show them their best path because it's never going to be the same as um, as my path was, as I found as I would compare myself to other people along the way. Uh, I couldn't do it the same way that, you know, Craig Wiseman had done it. Um, and I kept thinking if I could just get hits like that, you know, that this will happen. But it's, it's different for every person and you just, you have to just write the songs. And so that's what I, I get to sort of vicariously live through the new part with so many of the people at, at Smack Songs. Um, Another song that comes up a lot in conversation and, and someone that I work with is um, uh, John Cougar, John Deere, John 316, a song that uh, Keith Urban recorded. And I wrote this song with, with Josh Osborne, who I talk a lot about, and, and Ross Copperman. And I love nostalgia. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so nostalgic for where I grew up. Um, uh, you know, this sort of 80s American life idea of... Uh, watching MTV and uh, eating TV dinners and going and riding our bike. And, you know, it, it's not the same now, but it wasn't the same then either, I guess. I mean, people in the 80s, our parents would have said, well, it's not like it was in the 50s. And I know that to be true. And so my kids will have a different experience than that, but I can't help but wish that they, um, that they wouldn't grow up in my hometown of Mineral Wells with all the people I grew up with or, or their kids and have it the way we did. It's a little bit of, of John Cougar. I'm a 45 spinning on an old Victrola. I'm a two-strike swinger. I'm a Pepsi-Cola. 
quarterback saying I love you to the prom queen in a Chevy. John Wayne, Superman, California. I'm a Chris Christopherson Sunday morning. I'm a mama and daddy singing along down the clean the levee. Yeah, and I'm a child of a backseat freedom, baptized by rock and roll. John Cougar, John Deere, John 316. It's a good thing I'm just singing a little of these songs for y'all because I have the hardest time remembering lyrics. I think whatever brain power I, I had left, my kids have zapped it. So certainly feeling my age these days when it comes to memory. Plus, we just write so many songs. And, um, you know, I have used the line ceiling fan and t-shirt so many times that a lot of times I can just remember those lyrics um, but not enough to remember all the words to all these songs in fact one time I was at the bluebird and I saw a songwriter a pretty successful songwriter forget the words to his song and he looked him up on the phone while he was in the round and I thought that was just so rude I was like what kind of asshole doesn't remember the words to his own songs and here I am um, completely forgetting my own songs Oh, uh, someone just mentioned Barbara Mandrell. Gosh, Christina, I wouldn't do that to you, make you listen to me try to sing a Barbara Mandrell song. But I can tell you that um, I listen to Barbara Mandrell pretty much every day. <laughs> make my kids listen to uh, I Was Country When Country Wasn't Cool. We were cooking dinner last night and I put it on. Still the, the thing that got me into music in the first place. Um, oh gosh, Lee mentioning Are Your Eyes Still Blue. I don't, that song had four keys. Are your eyes still blue? See how high that is? Let me try that. Let me do another one. Are your... Let me try a little bit. It, it modulated four times. I don't know what I was ever thinking. Are your eyes still blue? I still remember how they used to shine. What did that change to? After the day you said goodbye You did what you had to do If I saw you, would I even know it's you? Are your eyes still blue? I haven't done that in a long time. That was the song that was on that record that I made in the 90s that I was talking about earlier when I, when I had my first record deal. And um, oh, I see that Shane Snyder played that this morning for his wife. It's funny that people know that song. I, I appreciate it. But boy, at the time, it didn't seem like anybody was listening to that song. <laughs> um, I have no idea what time it is. So it's 3 o'clock here where I'm at. And uh, I was supposed to go till 3. I know I started really late. So um, I'll answer a, a couple more questions. People are asking about songs that I just don't. I don't, um, I love the knowledge of all these deep cuts, but I haven't played these songs in years and I've written so many since. Um, <laughs> oh, Tony Osborne. So, uh, she's asking about writing with uh, J-Lo and Jennifer Nettles, which was, um, actually something that I got to do a few years ago. And... There's a really long story, but I will just tell you this. J-Lo was every bit as beautiful and kind and talented as you could ever imagine. I couldn't say enough about that experience. We actually went to her house. Josh Osborne and I got to go and write with her, and she cooked us dinner. J-Lo. Not have someone cook it. She was actually um, in the kitchen cooking and we were kind of just sitting there with our jaws dropped like, is this actually happening? So it did happen. It's going to be um, really good for the book that I write someday. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, right now is a, is a time that with Songland coming out and all the, the new stuff that Songland is going to bring, I have to just uh, acknowledge some of the cool things that I've been working on. I worked on an Old Dominion record and a new single that just came out called Some People Do. That is a, a pretty big stretch for these guys. I'm really proud of them. We wrote it with Thomas Rhett, another frequent collaborator. And um, 
I'm really, I'm really excited for everybody to hear this song. It's got a really cool message. Um, somebody asked, when do I think songwriter rounds will start up again in Nashville? Uh, I know everybody hopes sooner than later. Boy, we, you know, you don't know what you got till it's gone. A lot of times when people ask us to do these things, we're like, well, are we writing that day? Are we in the studio that day? Do we have the energy, the brain power? And um, now I would do anything to sit in the room with, with Josh and with Casey and just sit and trade songs back and forth. And, you know, maybe we'll try to do something like that here. I know there's been some people trying to make it happen with multiple people, which could be very cool. I appreciate that the Old Dominion group chat loves me. I love those guys. We've been friends for a long time. Someone said, do I have a song I wish I had written? I, I have so many, but um, my favorite, favorite song is an old Eddie Arnold song that I've been trying to rewrite most of my career. You give your hand to me And then you say hello And I can hardly speak My heart is beating so And you'll never, never know The one who loves you so You don't know me I just think that song, the simplicity of saying that you're just a friend. To you, I'm just a friend. That's all I've ever been, because you don't know me. I've just always wanted to write something that simple and eloquent. And um, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to do my best every day and uh, trying to write something that, that makes somebody feel something. And even trying in this time to, to write. It's hard to write through screens for me, because I like to be in the room with someone. But um, just like doing this is odd because I can't see your faces or, or just feel the energy in the room. But I do feel a lot of love from this. And I, uh, I just really appreciate everyone coming on here and, um, and sticking with us through the problems getting on, getting started. So thank you guys so much for the time. And thank you, American Songwriter, for giving me a platform and an opportunity. And I know uh, they've got some other great things coming up. So... I will see everyone very, very soon. I love all of y'all on here. I wish that I could talk to all of you. A lot of you I do talk to regularly. Anyway, have a great day.